Bluff City Media presents the Two Buck Sports Show. Stepping up to the microphone are your hosts, Drew Gann and Rusty Witten. Now, let's get to the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Two Bucks Sports Show, the show that almost didn't happen, which I'm sure we'll get to here in just a little bit. I am your co-host, Rusty Buckets, checking in in a rainy night here in Martin, Tennessee. Drew, it was flooding here earlier. It's uh, it's calmed down now, but I mean, it was coming a monsoon. How are things in North Mississippi? Well, you know, Rusty, it has been a beautiful week. Uh, it has been just a picture perfect week here in North Mississippi. Uh, it was so pretty that I decided to go take in a college baseball game last night. Uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit, too. Yeah, this podcast almost did not happen. We'll get to that in a minute, but I sure am glad to be here. I'm glad to spend this Thursday night, this hour to hour and a half with you, Buckets. Uh, just just so glad to be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I, you know, again, I, I never thought I'd see the day where I was happy to see your mug on this show, yeah. which kind of gets me right into my Bucks best of the week. We won't waste any time getting into that. And it's that the show tonight is the two buck sports show. It's not the one buck sports show as your boy was scrambling all afternoon trying to find co-hosts and spots and guest lectures or guest lectures, guest speakers, guest something. Lecture, yeah. I don't know. See, I'm still frazzled from trying to figure out what I'm going to do tonight on this show. So my best of the week is that it actually ended up being the two buck sports show and that I didn't have to scramble any more than I already did. Yeah, so everything was going off just as planned today, and as everybody is well aware that listens to this show that we put on every week, my wife is in the short rows when it comes to the stages of pregnancy. She is ready to birth a human at any time, and today at about 4 o'clock, I got a call at work. I was like, hey, uh, you may need to come home, and I came home promptly and only to be told, okay, I think this is happening Make sure all the kids' bags are in the car. I mean, uh, make sure our bags are in the car and the kids have their bags and send them to the neighbor's house. We're going to the hospital. <laughs> and so on the way, we called Rusty. I was like, hey, man, I know we've been saying it doesn't need to happen on a Thursday, but here we are at 4 o'clock, and I think it's happening. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, turns out Haley just pump faked us <laughs> real good uh, and to no fault of her own. I mean, Listen, when you get into these situations, you're on red alert at all times. You're just expecting the other shoe to drop. And so when you when you feel like that could be the shoe, you don't want to be like, nah, that that's not Hustler. it. And it turned out yeah. to be it. So mm-hmm. you just play it safe every time. And, yeah. Uh, I would do it again. It was a pump fake this time. Trial so run, if you will. Time, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, Rusty, if it hasn't happened this time, I mean, if it hasn't happened by next Thursday, I'm going to call you again at 5 o'clock and tell you, hey, it's happening, just to uh, <laughs> shoot your blood pressure through the roof. I mean, because it did. Because I'm at work, minding my own business. I'm working with a patient, and my phone starts buzzing like I'm getting a phone call. And I look down, and it says – it does not say Drew Gann. It says no. Haley Gann. And I part said, of the, part of I the said team. oh, no. Uh-huh. I said, <laughs> I said if, oh, if he no. sees me calling, he's just going to – Hit red, <laughs> well, hit the red button if he's busy and tell me he'll call me back in a minute. He sees you calling, it alarm bells start going off. They did. I looked up. It was a brand new patient I just met today, and I said, uh, ma'am, I, I'll, I'll be right back. I need to take this call. And I said, <laughs> hello? <laughs> yeah, and to Rusty's credit, he did not say, oh, crap. He, was, he did, did seem genuinely excited. So he faked it really well. I did because I was panicking. I'm, I'm standing there. If y'all watch this on YouTube, I'm standing there in the – it's called the cry room. It's like a little extra room that we have, and it's where we go to cry when things are going really tough. But I stepped in there, and I'm like, I'm so excited for y'all. This is wonderful news. I'm glad to be an uncle again. Oh. How in the world am I going to fill an hour and 15 minutes of podcast material by I'm myself? Like, because like immediately your mind doesn't go to oh i could just call luke or aaron or micah or somebody my mind goes i'm gonna have to do this by myself and i don't know english (laughs) yeah yeah it's imagine pushing all these buttons just by your lonesome Uh, listen if you watched last week's episode you knew that we messed up with the two of us in here (laughs) we ain't doing it by ourselves 
<laughs> I'm just let you know if you ever bail on me one time and it's just me, we there's no telling what we're talking about. We're going to, I've been rewatching 24. We may talk about plot lines of 24 yeah. from 2005. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll get into anything. I just want you to know that of all people, I am the stable one on this podcast. I show up <laughs> weekly. I'm on time. I'm prepared. I got my shirt tucked in. I'm ready to go to work. <laughs> you better not have that t shirt tucked in. You're not that old yet that old yet but i'm not the one getting called out to be a power ranger and all those other things you know being being single in your mid-30s has its perks i guess <laughs> <laughs> hey you st- your your chances go down precipitously if you start tucking those uh t-shirts and <laughs> basketball shorts so. you don't worry about it man i got this over here you don't worry about it so uh my best of the week it's fatherhood related it is that on saturday my wife and I purchased a minivan. <laughs> Rolling big fly. Let's go. Listen, so when a younger man cares about flash and about, you know, how fast things go and how cool they look and whatnot, let me tell you something. As a man that is almost 32 years old with almost four kids, nothing got me feeling so hot and bothered like getting that minivan yesterday. I mean, uh, on Saturday, I'm telling you, Rusty, and this is true. I got to thinking about it. I started making notes and stuff. The minivan is probably the most misrepresented vehicle by all of humanity. And let me just lay it out to you this way. I believe that a minivan is actually a very manly vehicle. So here's here are my points. Uh, a minivan is perfect for every single situation. Mm. Just... You cannot think of a situation in which a minivan is not better than any other vehicle. Okay? So, the back seat lays down. You can put a bed back there, an air mattress. You can haul tools and spare tires and whatever you want. Uh, The back hatch works as an umbrella when you are, you know, unloading groceries or loading groceries. Uh, There's a TV (laughs) in there. Look, this thing has a TV. Mm. Uh, there's plenty of room to nap. You fit eight people in there, like like bachelor party weekends. A minivan is like the perfect man vehicle. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I know you remember this night very well. We went and saw Garth Brooks, and we hauled eight this people in my gr- grandmother's minivan. Stapleton, and- right? No, it Oh, we, no, we did Stapleton, too, but I'm talking about Garth Brooks. We were rolling down 72. I drove us there, but I didn't drive it back. <laughs> um we went and saw Garth Brooks in Memphis, and there was about eight of us rolling in that red Chrysler Town and Country from Corinth yeah. to Memphis, and straight to like we're probably I would venture that we are in the minority of people who have rolled up to and parked there on the side of Peabody in a red minivan, only to go straight to Silkies <laughs> for a diver bucket. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a party bus. <laughs> You're is, just making man. my point for me. There's so much room. <laughs> My no. wife, you know, we love our house. We have a beautiful home that we got a huge steal on uh, back in 2021 when we purchased this house. It's almost 3,000 square foot. When we bought it, it was just me and her. And I guess that just shows you, like, the good Lord provides because we didn't have – it was just us. It was just a house we couldn't turn down. Yeah. But now we've got three kids with another on the way. My wife's always kind of, like, fiending for, us, like, some land just some pasture or some acreage that the kids can go. So she'll get on Zillow, which is like, (laughs) I think I'd rather my wife be on Tinder than Zillow. (laughs) And she, she'll send me like this 2000 square foot house. that has got five acres. And I'm like, honey, no, I I am not in, in the mood to downsize. Like I cannot have a smaller house. Like it's just a non-starter. And I, and I told her the same thing. She was like, how about like a, you like a, uh, Acadia or like, cause the Yukons are way too expensive. And so she was <laughs> yeah. like an Explorer or an Acadia or one of those GMC trains. And I was like, listen, honey, they sit the same amount of people in a smaller space. How can we downsize? <laughs> like this family is not getting any smaller. Like even physically, <laughs> we're all just growing bigger to be bigger people. <laughs> like man, we're going, there's going to be six of us. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> yeah. I need a minivan. This, yeah. this 32 year old dude, it's so excited about this man. Yeah. <laughs> and all I got, I got a text Saturday of a picture of a sweet family holding the keys to a minivan and in the I'm parking just like lot. This. 
and granted, like, I mean, like nobody's <laughs> business. And then I get a, a, D, a, a Generation X WWE gif right after it yeah. for any yeah. doubt or shade I was going to throw his direction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> no, listen, man, I'm so my, excited. My mama had a white Dodge Caravan that she put almost 300,000 miles on hauling my brother and I all across the Mid-South for baseball tournaments. Right. It was the, the, the Bama wagon is what everybody called it because she had that Bama tag on her front, hauled cool. us all across the Southeast and – uh, I got great memories in that minivan, man. Like taking those trips and going to football camps and going to see family and the beach and all. And I mean, people hate on them. Personally, I have no need for one, so I won't own one anytime soon. Right. But but I see the purpose. Hey, let, me, let me tell you, Rusty. It is the same exact thing that you've got. It just imagine you put a camper cabin over the bed of your truck, mm-hmm. and it's basically what I have right now. Those two back seats, the back three seats, like completely flat. No, I hear you. You've got but the same amount of seating with an enclosed trunk. I get you need a minivan. Nothing says my knees crack every time I stand up like a camper cab on the back of a truck. I'm not quite that old yet. <laughs> I think I actually like a camper cab on a truck, but I do too. But I don't want to say it too loud because I'm getting old. <laughs> But Rusty, this is the title of the podcast. It, this is like my life's motto right now. It is all about accomplishing the task in the most convenient way possible. Sure. I, and and I, I saw a fellow recently who had turned, like he'd put a camper cabin on the back of his truck and then he did like a little built-in bed and this like whole camping set up. And I'm like, that could be perfect for me and Shelves. I could have a little bed. I could sleep in on one side. She could have the old other side that you own her toys and, uh, right. The chair a few minutes ago. By the way, I apologize oh. to our, our watchers on YouTube. I'm sitting here listening to Drew talk, and I'm kind of looking because she normally sleeps on the couch. I'll get into this here in right. a minute during the show, but I couldn't find her. And then all of a sudden, I heard crunching, and I'm like, oh. huh. uh-uh. So I lean back, and I'm in a rental that's furnished by somebody else, and she's gnawing on the leg of a chair, and I hop in the chat. She chewing on a chair. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we've uh, we've got Ted here. The banister is oh, yeah. has just been uh, like. It was, um, it was a mistake to get a dog big enough to chew things that are up high. Like, yeah, you know, shout out to Misty, my landlord here. Big, big props to her because I called her. I was like, look, like I need a dog. I need some companionship, and she was uh-huh. gung ho. She was like, look, that dog, that house has plenty of dogs. Please, I would love for you to get uh-huh. a puppy, get a dog. Go ahead. Um, and she just said, you know, my only ask because I was like, look, I'll do a deposit, like a pet deposit. I'll sign whatever. And she's like, no, mm-hmm. the only my only ask is if she destroys anything, you just replace it. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. That's and fair. I started more than I, 100%, fair. more than fair. Mm-hmm. And I, I started a, a budget for that. I put that little line item <laughs> in my Excel spreadsheet down at the bottom. It says Misty Furniture now on my budget. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to increase that premium going in there every month. <laughs> As the dog grows, it's like $1 per pound per month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. When when she gets to be seventy five pounds, you're just, it's really hurting at that point. I'm gonna put half the paycheck in there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, a, <clears throat> somehow Shelby has eaten through the door. <laughs> That's why she's gonna be kennel trained for a while. But that kind of leads me directly into our Bucks beef of the week. And so, <laughs> again, I've had this dog coming up on three weeks now. This is my second show with her, and the first show Drew and I talked about off air. Like she didn't make a peep. She didn't make a sound. I didn't even know she was there. Cause she was sleeping on the couch over there tonight during this show. We've been recording for 15 minutes and 37 seconds. As of this mark, she has had the zoomies twice, gnawed on a chair, chewed on a pair of my shorts, a dryer sheet, drug my boot out of the room. And is yeah. now back on the couch to sleep in 15, almost 16 yeah. minutes. Work right there. The, sh- the shy puppy is gone. That for oh, the yeah. dog that I had, <clears throat> she, uh, just yesterday, I come home every day for lunch. Um, she goes to work with me on Thursdays. It's lighter day. She lounged around all day, lived her best life, getting all the belly rubs and pats and patients. Just love when she's there. But yesterday, I came home from lunch and made chicken tacos, and I'm sitting on my little coffee table over here. It's a little bit lower. Mm-hmm. And Drew, I was wrestling a bear. She was going for the tacos, <laughs> going for the table leg, bit my leg. Two year old. Hit the couch. All I saw was, I'm like, are you part shark? Cause like <laughs> all I saw were teeth and chomping and she was biting literally everything within like a foot radius of her. And I'm trying to cram a toy in her mouth. So then she dodged that and bites my wrist and I finally get her settled chewing on her little squirrel toy. And I'm like, all right, I catch my breath. 
I take a bite of taco only to almost spit it across the room when she bites my toe through my sock. <laughs> I'm like, this is for the birds. I, I think uh, I got a shark or a little baby bear, not a, not a dog. She yeah. was wild. Now, now I'll say this: she's not my like she's my beef for the week, but she's also part of the bet. I mean, you know, she's oh, great, yeah. but There's she is like she is coming out of her shell and like she, that's a wild dog. <laughs> I tell you, my wife. The last two, I guess, uh, spring breaks. You know, they get off spring break. I don't. And so the last two spring breaks, it won't happen this spring break, but they've went to South Carolina to see my sister-in-law and my nieces and nephews. And when I go, it's just me and Ted here at the house. And so every day I'll come home from work, I'll let him outside to play for a minute, and then we immediately go load up in the truck and go to Sonic and get him a pup cup. And I'm just like... He's like the perfect companion. And like when nobody else is in the house, he's just here and he's just kind of laying down. I think he's kind of settling down. You know, he's almost two now. And mm. so like he's just uh, like here. Yeah. Look, look at him. Oh, Ted. Hey, hey, hey. He just, Ma- he just the, being, being my buddy here. So. The original mascot of the podcast. Right. Right. So, uh, but yeah. So my beef of the week, it's a total 180 from what you're talking about. <clears throat> so if we're coming back from the facility tonight and i'm starving okay we're both starving we went to the hospital at like five we got out at like 8 30 uh and we're both just like famished and so there was nothing really on the way from the hospital to get on uh 22 and come back and so new albany it took the new albany exit and right there on my left i see it it's like all right arby's arby's they've got the meat you know what i'm saying (laughs) <laughs> and I don't know about you. Like I love Arby's. Are you an Arby's fan? I, I was talking when it about comes that to trashy fast food. I mean, Arby's is like it's wild, man. I, this afternoon, I was talking about the beef and cheddar. This afternoon, oh, yeah. yes, big Arby's fan. It is. It is the highest floor for any fast food entree. Agreed. Like you'll never have a beef and cheddar that's bad. Agreed. However, Uh-oh. Arby's. At nine o'clock at night, just buckle up, man. There was a car parked the wrong way in the drive-thru, not letting anybody in. And this is attached to a pilot gas station. <laughs> and so I walk in, and I'm just standing there at the counter for a couple minutes. There's a guy in front of me, and I was like, hey, is, anybody, is this closed? He's like, no, I've been standing here. The guy in front of me left five minutes ago. I've been standing here for a few minutes, and nobody's here. And about that time, somebody walked up from the back. And he was like, I don't know how to work that register. I'm just a cook. Uh, the cashier, uh, he went to the bathroom about 15 minutes ago, and he hadn't come back yet. <laughs> about that time, here he comes. <laughs> and, and you know you, the look. You know the look when you got caught pooping. <laughs> you know oh, yeah. He had that look, man. He, yeah. he got caught. And yeah. There was a line at the Arby's at 9 <laughs> o'clock at night. Everybody's wanting beef and cheddar, and homeboy has been He's in the bathroom. For He's minutes. getting rid of his. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, listen, you get what you pay for with a two-buck sports show. You also get it at Arby's. Uh, go, go while the sun's still out. It's yeah, in your man. Business. Listen, and if you can find a standalone Arby's, not one that's attached to a gas station, it's probably just that much better. My granddad loved, he was obsessed with Arby's, God rest his soul, and loved them curly <laughs> fries. And we go at oh, least yeah. once a week. And they, they the only restaurant, they serve the onion buns. And like, I'm all about all that. But you're too, like, I don't blame the man because if you're good at something, never do it for free. That's why you always poop on the clock, man. <laughs> yeah. Rusty told me that years ago. And I was, I, I've, I've carried that. And it'll be on my tombstone one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Never, never uh, do it for free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's nice, too. I work just like a block and a half from home. And so if I'm out and about, it's like, well, I just go home. <laughs> uh, you get that home field advantage and you can't beat yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. You can't beat that. So on that oh, note, yeah. with our mama's that listening is to the my podcast. Arby's beef of the week. <laughs> <laughs> no free shout. Shout out, no free shout outs. <laughs> oh man, how come Arby's Arby's call me? 
<laughs> not the one in New Albany. But. Not the one in New Albany, but the one in Corrient. Give us yeah. a call. <laughs> Hi. After the commercial break, we'll come back. We'll talk about Tim Grizz. Not just the level of individual talent that mm-hmm. he plays, but, but it's also the, the level of his mind. We haven't gotten cross-court open shot this year. Right. We haven't seen that pass a lot. Number one, you got to respect him going to the basket. There's a roller. I got to watch the roller. Uh, he has the mind to be able to say, I see all of that, but now I see this guy over here. I'm going to get him this open shot. How shifty he is to always be going forward. It's usually side to side. Yeah. His dribble moves are side to side, but going forward. Right. Which is very hard to defend. I just want to get you, as many times can I get you to do this? But for him, it's not here. It is here, which is with right, right, are, right. Are, are his moves to get down the floor. It's awkward for a defender mm-hmm. to try to catch a cadence. This, you dribble. <clears throat> So now what I do is now when you go put that ball down, I'm going for it. But with him, there's no. I, it's hard for my cadence. But uh, right. what's my cadence for you? Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I don't know yeah. what it is. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Who do you need to step it up? Outside of David Jones, I think David Jones is David Jones. I don't think you need him to step it up because he's been performing. Yeah, like I, he's David Jones. Like outside of him, he's fine. I think Quinterly needs to play better. In what way? Like I mean, he's facilitating the ball well. I mean, we like I don't to a, to a twelve from the field's not cutting it. It's not. It's not great. It's not great. And I don't need a runner three from the top of the key with three and a half seconds left. Is Virginia the game where Jordan Brown is going to cook? Those dudes aren't looking to run the ball. Cook what? Dude, I thought he was going to have a freaking night. He came out with that fresh cut, mm. lined up, mm. and then literally within the first 15 seconds, missed a wide open layup, yeah. and then picked yeah. up two fouls right away. I feel real lied to, because I thought we were getting a 20 and 10 guy. I didn't think it did anything for you. Well, I, I, think mean, I think we all, we all thought we were getting a 20 and 10 guy. And we are getting that in David Jones. I'm not even getting 20 or 10 minutes out of the guy. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Two Bucks Sports Show. If you made it to this point, you really are a rider or die. So go ahead and click subscribe on YouTube. Hit that bell. Get those notifications pushed directly to you so that you can hang out with us every Friday at 3 p.m. as well as check out the other great content. And Drew and I were chatting off air just then about how these late night podcasts, as we are recording at 1019 Central Standard Time, uh, here time. to get this show in after yeah God's time zone after the the incidents of the night that we just got to record these late at night because you just never know what's going to happen on the two bucks yeah. sports show you when that when it gets to the wind that's you know? it it's two bucks after dark and it gets it gets kind of delirious after a while you know, my mama Kate used to tell me it's like nothing good happens after midnight you know mm-hmm. it's kind of the same thing when you're recording the two buck sports show after 10 p.m <laughs> yeah. I, I mean buckle up <laughs> buckle up here we I go mean, all of our medicine has kicked in we're ready to roll and <laughs> it's ready. we're ready for a good night <laughs> yeah, yeah um, rusty so it's the only time during the nba season that we will record a show without having a grizzlies game to talk about yep. so uh i guess there is one like uh, there's one thing I guess we could talk about. As we were wrapping up last Thursday night recording for our last Friday show, the Grizzlies did go on to beat the Milwaukee Bucks at home in the most improbable win of the season, which I think I've said that about three different times. But right. I think that was an absolute game that I will remember when the offseason comes around and you're looking back, the postmortem kind of thoughts yep. of the season. That will be one that I went, uh, that I remember. But Milwaukee, it was one of those weird things where it was like, yeah. okay, here comes the All Star break. Milwaukee's coming to play Memphis, who's nobody's hurt. It's so all you gotta do is get this over with, and you know, Giannis and Dame, they're they're going to Indianapolis, and everybody else is going to Turks and Caicos, Turks and Caicos. Or Cancun, or yeah. wherever. And yeah. they just totally mailed it in. But props Except, to the young Grizzlies because the Grizzlies providing, did not, you know, <laughs> because even if. Milwaukee does mail it in. The Grizzlies, with this iteration of the team, 
still has to play really good to beat that team because Giannis and, was incredible. Uh, we took Giannis's best shot. Dame didn't have his best game until the second half, but like Vince had him tied up all night. We took Giannis's best shot and went toe to toe with one of the top three teams in the Eastern Conference with a mixture of a G League team and Jaron Jackson Jr. And like we just took it to him. Like yeah. Vince was in Dame's head the entire game, even up to the last shot, tied him up so he couldn't get a good look on yeah. that last shot. He still got a good shot off. They got close, but like I mean, it's just it's and I want to talk about this here and more in this segment, just the the developmental season that it has become and watching these cats show up and play in a night that yes, Milwaukee probably mailed it in, but we knew we had an opportunity on national TV to make a statement, and that's exactly what we did. Yeah, but Milwaukee's just not right either. You know, they're three yeah. and seven since Doc got hired. There's been a lot of dirty laundry, a lot of gnashing of teeth, and a lot of that is the absence of basketball for a week. You've got to have something to talk about. And and unfortunately for Doc Rivers, the talk has been Doc Rivers because right. JJ Reddit came out and said that, you know, he just he doesn't uh, he, he's not great at his job, basically. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. basically he gets jobs because he's he treats star players very well, which is important. Sure. Sure. But uh I think you the problem with Doc is that you only get so far based on star players alone and the X's and O's with star players is what you need to win titles and there's why he blows every big opportunity he gets yeah. outside of the 08 Celtics. And Dame looks off. That last possession, it was that's not Damian Lillard. That's not Portland Damian Lillard. And so uh I also didn't like that over the All Star break, Giannis came out and said, "This is Damian Lillard's team." That was yeah. a very kind of beta thing that I didn't really expect to hear uh-uh. from Giannis. Yeah, uh, considering he was, quote unquote, lack of a better term, born and raised as a Buck. You know, he's drafted there. They've groomed him. He's flourished there. Yeah. It's his team. For him, it almost seemed like he was a way to encourage Damian Lillard to, you know, keep doing what you're doing. But I, I just don't like hear my my star, my star mm-hmm. over the last decade just so easily hand over the reins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, something's off there for sure. But what's not off is this Grizzlies bench unit. And, and we'll talk about this more here in a minute. I do want to get yeah. into the Grizz for a bit because we saw the update today. You saw it today. Des and Marcus are out another three to five weeks. And, Drew, it just feels like – we're not tanking. There ain't no tanking in Memphis because these cats are going to go out and play like they did against the Nug- or against uh, the Bucks last week. It just feels like this is us kind of mailing it in with our superstars. We're going to give Marcus and Dez all the time they need to recover, which to the point that I want to get to, like I'm okay with that well, at this point. Of the season. We're well. Here, the, the, here's it's my a, thoughts it's a, on it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, finish your finish your. Sentence. I'll, I'll say it. It's a lost season. At this point, it'd be good just to kind of let these guys rest and recover. Like they should have no soreness, no pain, no any issues whatsoever, kind of lingering. Giving guys like Vince and Gigi the run that they have. Gigi's averaging 20 points, over 20 points a game his last six games. I mean, the kid has been lethal. He's been amazing. And there's video coming out. He spent his all-star break in the gym, in the lab, working on his shot, working on his movements. He stayed in Memphis. He didn't go to Turks and Caicos like BC and, J- and Jaron did and just worked on his game. Uh, and, and Zaire, yeah. like It's just fun to see these guys taking ownership of being like NBA players. And what I think is going to be the best part of this is not this year. This year sucks. Like It's over. We're mailing it in. We're, we're playing for draft lottery position. But like we said on last week's episode, yes, we have the most shallow bench and roster in the association right now, but that ain't going to be the case next year when we're fully healthy and all these guys getting this run now are that first bench unit. We're going to be cooking folks next year, Drew. Yeah, and that's the reason why I haven't gone as far as to to label this season a failure. It is a lost season, as like I said last week, as as it pertains to like your window. Like you felt like this was could have been a window opening thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Aside from all the off season drama and the twenty five game suspension, you kind of felt like this year twenty three for uh, the twenty three year old year for John, the twenty four year old year for Jaren. Like you felt like your windows opening as you're becoming more seasoned and experienced mm-hmm. as a team, especially with the addition of 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 uh, Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose just as vets, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but it's not a lost season in terms of development. And what you've right. seen this year is is you've seen uh, Zaire. Uh, Zaire had a huge game, but he's taken a lot of lumps this year. Hopefully, he kind of works through them. He had he was incredible yeah. in that Milwaukee game. Because you hope to see Excuse guys me. like that still succeed while you're recovering there. Like to watch guys like that the, still succeed. The mute fast enough. <laughs> fast enough. Fast enough. Uh, you want to see Zaire yeah. succeed even though he's not being good. And for him to go hang yeah. career high 27 against Milwaukee was so much fun watching him, yeah. those big dunks he had. That was a ton of fun to watch. Yeah. And but you've got you've seen the development of Gigi and Vince that you would have never seen if this team was playing it out at full strength. Right. And so I think it's uh it's it's fun. I am. I do miss Ja. I miss Daz. I miss Jared, and I miss Steve-O. I mean, I miss all the guys who've missed a lot of time. Uh, but I think that they are not. They're taking the right way. Right. They're taking in way. They're not losers. Okay. Mm-hmm. And here, don't hear what I'm not saying here. Like obviously, they're losing a lot of games, but they're not like Detroit. Chicago or Detroit. Or what Phoenix used to be, or Charlotte, like those those players have become losing players because the tank has gone on too long, and it's almost like there's a clear divide. Like Zach Kleiman uses the medical staff to impose tanking mm-hmm. because I don't think that the injury that Desmond Bain had should keep him out for ten to twelve weeks. Right. However, they're using that to kind of hamstring Taylor, but they're telling Taylor, go win, go develop, go try to win basketball games. Build winners here with a mindset of winning and competing every game. We're going to uh, kind of put the brakes on some of your star players uh, yeah. because the seventh, the best asset that the Grizzlies have is this first-round draft pick that they own this year. Yep. And so we're going to try to improve that behind the scenes mm-hmm. in the boardroom, but on the playing court, you go and try to win games. And it's 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 keeping that culture going that the yeah. Grizzlies have had so had in spades since Taylor Jenkins got here. It's the reason why I am such an apologist for Taylor Jenkins is because this does not happen on teams that do not have a culture that he built. He's a big, he's an absolute big part of that. You're, you're not wrong about that at all. And I, I agree. You nailed it, man. Like we're tanking the right way by shelving Marcus and Dez and, you know, letting those guys rest and recover and give and run to Scotty Pippen Jr., Gigi Jackson. We, you know, it's a lost season, but not a failure because we would have never found out who Gigi and Vince were had we been healthy. Would I rather be the number two seed in the Western Conference and cooking teams like we were doing oh, last year? Course. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but the if fact you told that me we're... this team, if you told me this team was going to go win twenty two straight games and <laughs> yeah. compete for the play in, I'm all in. I'm not 100%. pro tank. No, <laughs> ain't no tanking in the end, man. And that's no, what's fun uh, is they're not quitters. Like these guys are not quitters. We're doing it the right way because we're giving what's our future bitch in that second five. Uh, rotation guys, a ton of run this year because right. all this is going to do is this time next year when we're starting that playoff push to play for home court advantage, play for May and June, this is going to pay dividends because Gigi is going to have national TV experience against the Bucks. Vince is going to have experience guarding Luca, guarding Steph, right. guarding Dane. Like this is going to pay like Drew, the, I don't think we can put a dollar amount or a value amount on these minutes these guys are going to get between well, now and the end found, of the season. You have found what is almost certainly going to be your sixth man going forward. This 100%. Grizzlies team will have Vince Williams as their sixth man at a yeah. minimum. Uh, if he doesn't force himself into the starting lineup and make Marcus Smart that sixth man, 100%. right? You know, I could see a scenario where he does what he did in Boston and lead the second unit and have been yeah. a formidable force as the second unit leader. He could but, be he could be that backup. He could be that backup to Dez with Scottie Pippen being the old you know Tyus Stones Jones that we had running the point. Right. I mean that's that's a real scenario that we would have never had had we stayed healthy this year. A quote unquote backup point guard, but he's getting 28 to 32 minutes a game. You know? <laughs> right, right. He's just, he, the only difference is he doesn't have his name called out 
when the lights are dimmed and FedEx right. more, you know. And he's at that point in his career. I don't know that's going to matter as much to him because Marcus can step up and he can make those plays and be that dude without having to have the spotlight on him, you know. But but Drew, it's just hey, don't look now. The development season is not over because you know who's coming back tomorrow. <clears throat> Let's go, Jake Larabia. <laughs> Jake Larabia, keep his trash butt to... on the bench, man. <laughs> Jake Larabia is going to part the Red Sea tomorrow and reveal himself <laughs> as a sleeper agent. <laughs> yes, yeah, for like for the Clippers. <laughs> yeah, he is going to. I mean, that it was funny, like. It's it was last off season, I think. Yeah. Everybody was talking up Santi Aldama, and it's like, what the crap? Like, no, yeah. it's me with that. And it turned out to be awesome, you know. Yeah. And then this off season, it was Laravia, and then Laravia did what Laravia does, and he twists his finger, <laughs> and he's out for nineteen weeks. But he's coming back tomorrow. He's coming back I'll... tomorrow. He's going to show everybody what the hype was all about <laughs> leading up no, to the not. season. Get, He's man, going to be the, the crown jewel players. of the Taylor Jenkins development. Between David Roddy and Jake LaRavia, you picked the trashiest players to hang your hat on. I am not. I, I'm being God. With I hope so. I, I Dear do God. not believe in Jake LaRavia. <laughs> but you know who's who's developing a three point shot on his his imminent return to the Memphis Grizzlies? His, his, Brandon his, Clark his, has his, been putting some his great Instagram videos. Three pointer. Them unguarded Instagram yeah. three pointers you, looking. Be silky. careful. Be careful. <laughs> Because you know who cuts those videos and puts them on his Instagram. Him. Yeah. Him. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I've yet to see. I think I heard Chris Vernon say this one time. I was like, you never see a player post his own misses. You know, like, never. Yeah. Like, it's he all, just posts if those. you look at Instagram videos, it is only makes. Period. Yeah. And he looks <laughs> so, real bouncy on those dunks that he's posting. He I, doesn't show the ones where he ain't getting up. <laughs> I, I say that, but I will follow up with this. Is, his jumper has always been super ugly. It doesn't look, it looks fluid. Mm -hmm. It looks it's better. Fun. It looks, it looks more athletic, but drew, like I was kind of half joking. Like he does look bouncy in the videos that he's posting. And that's such a big part of his game. Like I text you when you sent me that video and I responded, if he can develop a shot because yeah. a guy like, you know, his game has always been above the rim. And if he can't redevelop that though, he does look bouncy and he looks good right. in those videos. If he can then develop a shot to kind of make up for that dude, watch out, man, him, him being that, that five off the bench would be like huge, man. If he can make some threes here and there, he can hit those mid ranges. If he's not as bouncy yeah. as he once was, hopefully he is because watching BC and Jod together on the court with some dunks it's and put so backs and blocks is, it's so it much just, fun. And just the the two man game, it's I love Brandon Clark because he offered like some offense that wasn't underneath the basket. He was so good at that floater, like mm -hmm. in a pick and roll game where he could just stop and float it up. Uh, there's so much about Brandon Clark's game that you can like, and so if he can come back and just get his sea legs this season, if that's all, mm -hmm. if that's his only goal is just to come right. back and get and in shape, to, to get some rep, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this: They're going to have to like give Jaron a break if they're not going to bring anybody else back. Dear He's God. shouldering too much, and you yeah. can tell in some of these games it does look like it's damaged his psyche a little bit because he seems like he's just shouldering the world, and a lot of that is probably self-inflicted. You put he puts on himself because sure. I don't think that he is not. I don't believe. This season, especially, but probably ever, has been told like, "Hey, man, uh, you've got to be the guy tonight." Yeah. And, like, but he he feels that now, considering he's in a starting lineup with, you know, John Jared Conchar and, and yeah. Santi and you know, uh, Jacob Gillard. Like, yeah, he's all, and all he's doing is averaging over twenty two points a game and just absolutely killing it, man. And yeah, he's like, just kind of up he's to kind the plate, of reverted. He's tired. To, yeah. He's kind of reverted back to a lot of stupid fouls, frustration. I was fouls. just about to say he's averaging almost four fouls a game right now. And like that's the young Jared. That's tired Jared. Crap, that might even be him trying to get a break in the middle of the game. It's just to go get some some sitting time. But yeah, and I just don't want this. I don't want him shouldering the load only to have a 
have a knee injury late because he's yeah. just carried the whole team yeah, all too year much. long. And I think that that's why they're trying to get BC back is BC can be that guy that kind of gives him a spell and lets him catch his breath and let BC get some run and um and and give Jaron that break that he needs because he's been shouldering this team for far too long. But like you said, man, you get BC back, get him some reps, get him some run this year that'll lead into a successful offseason. But Drew. Whatever happens, don't get Haley a Brandon Clark jersey, please. I'd like for him no, to be a Grizz next I year. I don't want to see him gone. Yeah. Please do not get him. Get her a Jake Moravia jersey. <laughs> to say, you'll have to custom make it because they won't sell those. At the they store. sell it. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like it's going to be in the warehouse. All the Chandler Parsons jerseys they made back in the day. Uh, but yeah. I mean, I, I I will promise you that Haley will not have a jersey of Brandon Clark. Or Thank you. Anybody that I Thank you. love and adore. Uh, the last bit of NBA talk I do want to get to, too, is like, did you watch any of the All Star festivities? Yeah. So I have always made it a point to watch All Star Saturday night. I love yeah. that. The skills. 100%. I rarely ever watch the All Star game. Well, Jaw was in it. I watched the whole game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that. The All Star Game is just so broken, yeah. like it's just it's not even entertaining, and I don't know how you fix it. That's been the hot topic of conversation in the week. This week is how you fix the All Star Game. I don't have any ideas on how you do it. I just know that those players are making forty to sixty million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just not going to play hard, and mm-hmm. I don't know how you make them play hard. However, yeah. the all Star Saturday night was not very good either, <laughs> and it's typically good. The three point contest it was great, it was fun. The Steph versus Sabrina three point contest was, awesome. was a ton of fun. That was awesome. I would I, I would watch that. a couple rounds. I I think you know everybody wants Caitlin Clark in there. Like okay, sure. Damian Lillard's a two time defending champion. Yep. Steph Curry's the best three point shooter of all time. Pair him pair pair uh, Sabrina and Caitlin Clark. And Steph and Dame put them and in practice. Whatever you want to do it, expand that. I'm good with it. Hundred percent. Dunk contest was trash. It was a screw trash. job from the start. They wanted so badly for Jalen Brown to win that yep. to kind of give it some name cachet. I think they thought that if Jalen Brown was awesome, then it would kind of coax some of the other All Star level players into doing it. And they graded the dunks that way. He was garbage. So bad. Uh, the two best dunks I saw the whole time was Mac McClung's first dunk where he kind of threw yes. it up to himself. That was yeah. awesome. And the, and the air was incredible. Never, Never been done before. Yeah. Never been done that, before. That is, there's two things that I love when I'm looking at a dunk. It's something creative that I haven't necessarily seen before or a spinoff or, and then doing it on your first try. Like mm-hmm. don't don't try it three times. It it loses its luster. Mac McClung was good. He was not as electric as last year, but he was by far the best dunker there. Yep. Jacob Toppin got robbed. Uh yes. his dunk he had was awesome in the first yes. round, but because they wanted Jalen Brown in it, they put Jalen Brown in it. And I really thought that they were going to screw Mac McClung out of it hey, and, and just give it to Jalen Brown. He did was jump over Shaq. the action glove, you know. Yeah. Like, and then all he did was jump over Shaq. I miss the days. I hate the guy because no, he didn't jump over Shaq. He jumped over a five foot two dude sitting no, in no, a no. chair. That's J- I was talking about Mac McClung. I was getting to that. Oh, Mac I McClung jumped over Shaq. No, Jalen oh, Brown yeah, put a five awesome. foot two dude in a chair and then jumped over him. Like nothing about like, that was awesome. It's like Rusty saying, "I'm going to jump over Drew," and everybody's like, "Okay, who can't?" And then he's like, "Oh, but he's also going to be sitting down like, <laughs> with my oh. busted knees. We'd have to do it that way anyway." But. Oh, and I'm going to almost cover my eyes like, after I land. I'm going to do. I'm going to dab on it when I hit the ground. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to do the D Brown like self blindfolding, which would have been cool. Yeah, except but, you didn't do it. You just hit the ground and dabbed. Yeah, D to the dead air. Jalen landed. Dude, it was like, bow. <laughs> dude jumped over a chair. Yeah. <laughs> With a five foot two dude recording, but you know my thoughts on All Star Weekend are, are similar, man. Like the dunk contest was trash. Like, I, you know, it was cool to see Jalen Brown do uh, a tribute to that kid who died, but the dunk he did yeah. but it was awful. Listen, Sabrina and Steph I, were incredible, that was dude. Cool. I like, I like heartfelt moments and stuff. Sure, but, but then the dunk was, was trash. Yeah, hundred percent. That was painter the judges and hundred percent. Sabrina and Steph. 
Sabrina and Steph are incredible. I would have watched that for an hour. Just let them go back and forth. Three point contest was entertaining. Oh, yeah. Um, it was great. I, I love two out of three. Yeah. I love Sabrina stepping up and be like, no, I'll shoot from the NBA line. I don't care. And then yeah. shot 20, made 26, just like Dame, just like Kat, just like and you know, other guys. Saying, I don't know why she's shooting from the NBA line. He might as well have said she's she shooting can't say. barefoot the in the kitchen. Like, yeah. Like, um, you, Kenny Smith's got to know that is a lightning rod. You just yeah. play that down the middle, man. Don't say yeah. anything that you think might go the other way. And he, but we've got, he hit we, a home run. We've glossed over the biggest highlight of the Grizz of the weekend was Vince Williams Jr. played in the Rising Star game. You know, we talked about it last week that he deserved he to be there. He backdoored he, in. He didn't play much. He, he got a, a little yeah, bit of run, but he played. Thing. He was there. Jelly Roll represented us on his on his jersey yeah. or on his jacket, which was cool to see. Otherwise, All Star Weekend's a dud, man. Miss me with that. The only other highlight for me was watching, like Scotty Barnes, man. Watching him oh in the God. skills contest that whole event was horrible. It was, but watching like, him throw that backwards, teams? but that backwards half court shot, and then watching him try and dribble through those obstacles was like watching a monkey use a keyboard. How about uh, that, man? It was so funny I watching I him dribble off using his a keyboard foot. would be more entertaining than watching was, Scotty I, Barnes try to dribble. I don't, I don't know, man. Watching him try to dribble made me laugh that, so hard. <laughs> the positive to that was everybody started unloading the clip of funny mm -hmm. instances where Scotty Barnes was not looking athletic at all. <laughs> I get running out of the tunnel like a yeah. deer on ice. Like it was, it was great for that. The internet yeah, is that's what I'm saying. piling on. You know? And then watching these interviews where it's like, are we sure Scotty Barnes is smart? Because like watching some of these interviews, it's like, what is this cat doing? <laughs> yeah. It, and you got the deep dive into uh, Halliburton's two different tones of voices. Like he's he, right. He, he has a high pitched voice and a low pitched voice, and he just seemingly goes back and forth. And he's just like Cat, realizing it. Oh, Cat! Cat, Cat, Cat is, is the zestiest all, player in the NBA. One hundred percent. He is so zesty, man. He'll do he'll do an interview mid game like this, and then that in, like then he'll be playing PlayStation, and it's like who who, who is this oh. guy? And that's how you know it's put on. He he is yeah. cognizant of the fact that he sounds like a 12-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. And so when he sits down and he's planning to talk to people, he'll lower his voice down. Right. When you catch him in the heat of the moment, he says stuff like, we in Minnesota now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real cat. You know, because that's, that's it. the moment cat. That's the real that's cat. It. We in he Minnesota hits now. He hits that block and he's like, we, we run this. We run this. <laughs> now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And the funniest part of All Star Weekend was Draymond saying, "This is just like Carl Anthony Towns in his prime, scoring forty down by 20. That's it. That or no, no, no. The best was when Chuck said, "Hey, Draymond, you know who asked about you the other day?" Draymond said, "Who?" Charles goes, "Nobody." <laughs> I should have watched that broadcast, but I didn't. I did see I all did. the clips. After. I uh, I watched it till the end of the, about midway into the third quarter. I stayed up and watched it just to, just for something to watch to see it. Have it on. When, and when I went to, I went to, when Chuck said that, I was like, I'm going to bed, man. He just like, he absolutely toasted Draymond. You know who asked about you the other day? Who? Nobody. <laughs> yeah. He's always got a good rebuttal because that was a rebuttal to Draymond saying, Hey, you want one of my rings? And yeah. Said, you know who I just asked about you? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's my thoughts. Uh, is there any other NBA talks that you want to have uh, before we go to our second break here? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't care about some other teams. Grizz are in a rebuilding year. We're going to have a fun fight to the finish because these young guys are going to scrap. They're going to fight. They're going to play for that Memphis on their chest. You know, Drew, we've had a lot of win fun. win one game the rest of the year, win Mark Gasol's jersey retirement against Philly. Because we'll be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please. Please win that game for me, Drew, Haley, and TBD because I got one more ticket for that game. We don't know who's going to use it, but somebody's going to use it. <laughs> and and uh, just quick Shameless plug for the two boys here on the Two Bucks Sports Show. Uh, our good buddy Daniel reached out. You will catch the Two Bucks on mm -hmm. one or two or a couple different uh, post-game shows for Grizz 901 as the season kind of drags on. There's some previous engagements. And so we will join <coughs> our, or we will host Grizz 901 mm -hmm. post-game shows a couple times down the road. We will be sure to keep you guys locked and loaded on dates on that one. You can expect us. And let me tell you, if it's a game at Denver or at Sacramento, buckle up because it's you gonna know be that's the game they're gonna be like, nah, oh, I'm all in the nah. <laughs> they're playing. We're playing at Portland on a Tuesday night. They're gonna be like, Drew, what y'all doing? What y'all doing? <laughs> 
And you I know we ain't going to say no because we grow on the brand. So we ain't saying no. But yeah. speaking of that, Drew, make sure y'all log into bluffcity.co. You can catch all my articles there. You can catch this show, other great shows. Go ahead and sign up for an insider. It's $5 a month. You get access to the Discord where you can talk to Drew and I. We'll put polls. We'll put interactive stuff in there. You can also interact with all the other content creators. Make sure that you're checking that out. Uh, $5 a month. It's not that much. It's less than what you pay for coffee every month. Join it up. Come hang out with us. Talk to the other content creators. And we'll get to some sad, sad times after this commercial break. I'm, I'm just big on being able to vocalize what someone's role is. I always mm. thought my best coaches were the people that let me know exactly what you expect from me. Now, I might not like it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if you come to me man to man to say, this is how we're this is how we think we're gonna play you, bang, bang, bang. And and uh, hopefully everybody understands. I am not saying that this has not, not been done with this team. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying from my experience, we all have egos when we get to this game. Right. All of us. Every to the last person on the bench, you got an ego. But you're not gonna we're not all of us can't be the man. Yeah. You're not, you 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 gotta be able to say, okay, he's a man, but what do I do and what can I do to help us be good? And yeah. if it's vocalized to you, then you know exactly what I'm, and if I'm out there doing it and now I'm not getting the result from you, now we got we gotta sit yeah. down and have another conversation. Mm -hmm. But as long as it is told to you, this is what we expect from you, this is how we want you to play, then then I, I feel like again, keeping this logo. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, Christian. Yes. You are Penny Hardaway. I'm not. Yes, you are. Okay. Today, you're going to play act. Okay? okay. Gabe, because you're a Jordan Brown apologist, you're going to be Jordan Brown. <laughs> I'm a Jordan Brown apologist. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. Y'all are sitting across the room from each other. I said, don't tweet him hate. And he's like, you're an apologist. <laughs> like, good God. But either way, continue. We're in a room together. Why did things break down? Jordan, we brought you in this year to be the centerpiece of our offense. <laughs> <laughs> you came in out of shape. Let's call it what it is. Call it spade a spade. We play fast. Told you this when we were recruiting you. We play fast. One of the fastest paces in the country. You have to be able to get up and down the floor. You have failed at that. Oh, well, I'm leaving. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Uncle Buck, welcome back to the final segment of the show, man. You know, every I just year need to you get and something I... off my chest. I've got to get Wait. something off my chest. Last week, I just begged and pleaded with everybody to just try college baseball. You've got Ole Miss and Mississippi State right down the road. They're two historically great programs. Just, just try it. You'll have a good time. I apologize to everybody <laughs> who, who who gave Ole Miss or Mississippi State baseball a try this week. Woof. You know, Drew, same song, different dance. You know, it's just like, or no, excuse me, same song, same dance for us. Cause like we started off Mississippi State. I'll kind of go first and I'll shut up. Let's talk about Ole Miss. State started off saluting the troops. Uh, then the Air Force Academy come to start. Well, we did our patriotic duty. We gave them a win on yeah. Saturday. Um, we sure did. Uh, took two out of three from the Air Force Academy. Looked good. Bats looked good. Dakota Jordan hit the baseball like he was angry at it again, picking up where he left off last year mashing kids in the head with his massive thigh trying to score there was this uh play at the plate where he the catcher came up the line the throw just took him up there dakota tried to jump over him about decapitate decapitated a kid and immediately got applications to try out for the running back position for the football team <laughs> um hunter hines is not hitting the baseball quite well you know one of the sec leaders last year in home runs has yet to hit one this year it's been fun to watch Bryce Chance, this little skinny boy from outside of Jackson, just step up and get big hit after big hit for us um, already this year, the five games that we've played. But you're two and three. You know, <clears throat> we're three years removed. I'm going to go on a quick rant here. I promise to keep it brief. We're no, two can't. years removed, three years removed from a national championship. Chris Limonis won a national championship on the back of, call it what it is, Andy oh. Canisario, who, who left in under – very in disgrace <laughs> in disgrace and there's been call like it's gotten so bad there are calls obviously 
you know, very, very tongue in cheek calls for him to come back because he built this program. And then Lamotus won a title with his players. Let's be honest. It's the Gene Chiswick situation, you know, hundred percent. He and inher- he inherited an amazing baseball team with some great that, leaders of Tanner Allen and Rowdy Jordan and these in uh, uh, Luke Hancock Bednar. in first base who played for yeah. like nine years, man, and Will Bednar and, and just to like, take it one step further, just to a title, just to prove your point, is the season that Andy Cannizzaro got canned in the middle of the season. The interim coach took Mississippi State to Omaha. Uh, to Omaha. I mean, yeah. that team was freaking I mean, loaded. Yeah. And then he goes to TCU and doesn't do a whole lot. But, like, right. like that team was freaking loaded. And so we are three years removed from a national championship game or championship win, and we're losing midweek games to Austin P. Like, game. we lost Tuesday night. That's what I'm saying. We lost Tuesday <laughs> yeah. night pretty – like, they beat us, straight up beat us, three to two. We didn't score until late. Like, we pitched well, but they got some runs early, and our bats just didn't wake up. And then Wednesday night happened. If that wasn't bad enough, it is 10 yeah. to 6. Mississippi State is winning 10 to 6 in the bottom of the seventh. And we lose 13 to 10. How are you going to give up? Here's the I rub already. How are you going to give go. up seven runs in two innings to Austin P? They're not even a good mid major. Like, and then we got Georgia Southern coming to town this weekend, who actually is a decent team. They make regionals most years. They're a decent little baseball team. They made a regional last year. I think they were in Coral Gable, Coral Gables maybe last year. They're a decent little baseball team. Uh, 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 Georgia Southern. They're a decent little baseball yeah. team. It wasn't. A, oh, they may have been last year. Yeah. <clears throat> and they're coming to town sorry. this weekend, and yeah. we've got to get it. No, no, sorry. I, I'm just I'm flustered at this point because like, what are we doing? Like Chris Lamonis, like I've got some connections here. There's a guy here in Martin. I've got some friends that are close to the baseball team. That seat is getting very hot. You get one shot. You get one shot to go and fire your coaching staff. Scott Boxall was the problem last year. Pitching yeah. was a nightmare. We set a school record for the highest ERA in program history, come clocking in very close to nine runs a game. We were abysmal on the mound last year. So you fire Scott Foxhall. You bring in Justin Parker, who's a phenomenal pitching coach and did a great job at South Carolina and already showing signs of promise this year just for the bats to fall off and not hit. Chris Limonis has to get it together or he will not finish the season as the head man at Mississippi State. We've got to turn it around. We need to go 3-0 and and win three convincing games this weekend against Georgia Southern or that seat's only going to get hotter. Yeah, you're right about that. And – this Ole Miss and Mississippi State's kind of running parallel in this in in a couple of scenarios. To put a bow on Mississippi State, that game last night, just to run you down kind of the box score here inning by inning, uh State gets out to a five to nothing lead and then Arc- uh Austin P scores four in the top of the third. So five four, then you extend it to eight to four, and then from that point you get outscored uh Nine, nine to two, three, uh, two, nine to two, nine to two, yeah. including giving up seven runs in the top of the eighth and ninth combined. And so, yeah, it's it. it the frustrating part, if you're a Mississippi State fan, which I'm not, I'm glad that we're here in this position together. Um, <laughs> Misery loves company. Is is that you hit the ball great last year, but you were throwing the ball with your wrong hand. You, you know, like you said, you you set school records for ERA, SEC, I mean, deplorable. Walks, the whole and, thing. And awful. And this year, you're not issuing hardly any walks at all. Yesterday in that game, for a college baseball midweek game, you only walked five people. That is incredible. But then only, I mean, and you scored 10 runs. I mean, you're talking about a game against Austin oh P. God. And then the night before, what would you say, three to two? Three right. to two. You've, you've got to put up 15 runs against – you, Austin you P mustered on Tuesday and Starville. You mustered two runs against Austin P. You, you threw, uh, and that's like that's where you should be getting run for young pitchers. And then your right. offense, you're getting swings, you're getting cuts for Dakota, you're getting cuts for Bryce, you're getting cuts for Rice right. Highfall. They're just seeing pitches coming in. They're just seeing baseballs, and you should be like having a field day. Like then by the end of the by 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 the sixth inning of the Wednesday night game, like you should be playing freshmen and sophomores. Dakota should be sitting over there with his jersey untucked. But instead, you're in a battle with Austin P. Well, and you look at the good teams in this league, and you win these games, and it takes you less than nine innings. There is a run rule 
in college baseball. South Carolina, the number 21 team, won in eight innings, 13 to three. Uh, Tennessee won 16 to nothing in seven. Alabama won 12 to nothing in seven. Like it's it's the thing I say about football is when you play, you can't always control your opponents, but when you have a soft schedule, you've got to beat the brakes off of them. Yep. And it's really alarming when you think you're up here and you're only winning games against teams down here by a very small margin. It's alarming, regardless of yep. whether or not you're winning or not. And so Ole Miss, to pivot, <laughs> Ole Miss went to Hawaii and played a four-game series against the Rainbow Warriors in Oahu. And I don't know if you saw this, Rusty. If you didn't, I'd give you 50 guesses who threw out the first pitch of the Friday night game in Hawaii. I didn't you didn't see, see it? it? Uh-huh. All right. I'd give you a 1,000 guesses and you wouldn't get it. Who is he it? He is a former NFL running back. Played in the NFC West. Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> was a fantasy football stud for one season and ended his career as an Atlanta Falcon. He played at the Ty University Gurley? of Georgia. Todd, Todd Gurley? Gurley throughout the That's first random thing in the world. The Hawaii Ole Miss Friday night baseball game. Why? They brought him up in the booth. I'm like, listen, I'm telling you, this broadcast was a really good wow. broadcast. But it started, that game, first pitch was at 1030, God's time. God. And Woo. they brought him up, and he they was like, what are you doing here? The commentators <laughs> didn't even know why Todd Gurley <laughs> was here. And he just said, I got a buddy that owns a resort place here, and he taught me into coming, and we went to a game. <laughs> and they and saw me the here, and pitch. they asked me to throw the first pitch. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> the most organic, <laughs> thrown together scenario ever. <laughs> um, but Ole Miss goes and plays Hawaii in the first game. Like I said, starts at ten thirty, God's time, and then it goes for thirteen innings for the for the Rebels to win late uh, and pull that one out. And then they play a doubleheader, two seven inning games on Saturday. They win the first one by a run. Both of those games were really low scoring, kind of defensive battles. That that stadium being on an island out there is really hard to hit. And Hawaii does a real good job of recruiting small ball kind of players. Uh, they don't nobody there swings for the fences. They're, in four games, there's only one home run uh, by either team, and so uh, Ole Miss wins two narrowly, highly contested games early. And you're like, okay, well, let's just cruise here. Let's get out of here with another win, only for them to get outscored 22 to five on the back end of that series. Uh, back end of that series, including the finale game, in which Ole Miss walked ten people, hit four, and had six errors. Jeez. They so they just left with a very sour taste in your mouth, and then. At that point, so Monday, I'm thinking about Ole Miss baseball because that's what I do. And I try to make excuses because I love this team and I don't want them to be horrible. And so I tell myself, it's got to be hard. You know, you're traveling all the way out to Hawaii, different time zones. You're probably having a lot of fun while you're there. Baseball may not be first on your priority list. And as you get into game three and four in Hawaii, maybe you lag off. I can paint a picture to where that can happen. Sure. However, then on a beautiful Wednesday at four o'clock, I decided to pack my whole family up and go watch Ole Miss play baseball for the home opener in Oxford, Mississippi, and watch us get beat by Arkansas State four to two. <laughs> and at that point, I'm I'm in the I'm in the cellar, man. I mean, <laughs> Ole Miss went one Down of thirteen. Bad. Down I went, bad. Ole Miss went one of 13 with running in, runners in scoring position. And the reality it right now, the reality right now, now this can change. You see how fortunes change in baseball all the time. We've both cheered for teams. We thought stunk who made a run, you know. Right. Uh, the reality right now as I see it is that I don't think that there's one thing that this Ole Miss team does that's good. 
that's dis- that can distinguish that they can build around. They don't hit the ball well. They don't pitch the ball well. There's question marks because you've lost your last two aces to Tommy John surgery. Neither of them are pitching this year. But you're you have your pitching, your starting pitching is a question mark. Your batting lineup is just a whole bunch of guys that you've never really heard of before. You're starting a true freshman catcher. The only two players that you're returning off the top of my head, actually, for a fact, the only two players that you're returning in a starting lineup were two guys that transferred in last year. A guy yeah. from, uh, a guy from that transferred from Tulane, and a guy that transferred from JUCO. It's your only two returning starters from last year in the field. And so, like, this team is just, like, thrown together and young. And so I don't really see in in 2022 when you looked at the Ole Miss team, you, I was genuinely baffled to how this team could be so bad when they were 7-14 and 14 in the SEC when you were so heavily laden with senior leaders like Elko and Graham and Bench. And, like, you had – to work around the periphery to make the team as a whole mesh together, and they figured that out. But when they were in their their dwell in the dwell, uh, sorry, in the cellar, there it is. You you could be an optimist and say if they can just do this, like this team should be good. I cannot say that about this team right now. I cannot find a redeeming quality about this team right now, and it puts Ole Miss and Mississippi State both in weird spots because one year apart, we won College World Series right. titles. Right. The only difference is your coach won a College World Series title in his first year on the job with players that he didn't recruit. That can mm-hmm. be used against him. Right. We're entering year 23 or 24 of Mike Bianco. He won a title in year 21 or 22. In a year I he was supposed to get canned. In a year that he was, you know, his contract was not rolled over leading into the 22 season for Mississippi, folks that are not familiar with Mississippi uh, government employee contracts, which I'm sure that's most of us. Most here. of our <laughs> uh, uh, government employees cannot sign a contract longer than four years. So every offseason, if you have a good year, your contract is rolled over to a four year deal again. Mm-hmm. Mike Bianco's contract leading into 2022 was not rolled over. He was only a three-year contract, three years. At the end of his season, he would only have two seasons remaining that he would get bought out for. That's why it's done that way. That That's why they don't roll you over, save money on a buyout, because you're planning on firing him if he doesn't right. perform. Well, he went and won a College World Series. <laughs> so any other place, you would think he's probably set for life. And I do believe that he's at least got next season. Mm-hmm. I don't envision a scenario in which Mike Bianco is not coaching Ole Miss baseball in the 25-26 season. And I think I'm okay with that. Like, I'm, I'm still riding really high with that College World Series. Like, he built the program. You can't say yeah. – uh, Mississippi State's coach can't say that. The, the, only only can't he's say got, that the only thing he's got, which is which is a major check mark yeah. on his favor, is that he it's won it all. He won it all. Now it was with somebody else's kids, but he won it all. <laughs> As Drew dies over there, the only thing he's got going, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. only thing he's got going is that title. But it was with somebody else's kids, and Bianco 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 has a yeah. long, long history at Ole Miss. I agree. He, I think of the two, if he gets he fired now or in ten yeah. years, he will have a statue. 100%. And of the two, he has the better shot to be the head man next year. Lamonis is oh, – Lamonis may not be coaching. I'm going to go watch this play at Vanderbilt in April. He may not even be the coach then. I'm trying to find a series yeah. where I can go to Starkville, but he may not even be the coach for that series in April against Vanderbilt. Yeah, I don't want to be too dramatic about Mississippi State yet because it seems <laughs> like early. the yeah. – Unlike Ole Miss, they returned a bunch of guys in the field from last year, if I'm not mistaken. You've no, got the names that I remember. I remember – Armani Larry and I remember Dakota Jordan. I remember Ross Highfall and the the first baseman Hunter yeah. Hayes, former uh, former country music singer. Hunter <laughs> Hayes plays first base for Mississippi yeah. State. Welcome uh, to the two bucks for show. <laughs> uh, and so I feel like that is a recipe for a Mississippi State fan to look and just be like, "Listen, we fixed what w- the problem was last year, so why can't we not?" figure out the bats again right and so i feel like there's more of a 
I think there's more upside. optimistic as a state fan. And, like, and there, our schedule, there's, a, there's a path forward. Our schedule is favorable. We have two tough road series. We play at Florida, at Vanderbilt. That's two tough road series. That's and a, then Drew, like, a, I mean, that's rough. That's, that's rough. Tough. Yeah. And then, but Drew, Tuesday night was not a good night for premier college yeah. baseball programs because state lost. Uh, let's see, Oklahoma lost to Dallas Baptist, who Dallas Baptist is a the good Dallas baseball Baptist team, the real team. Yeah. Um, uh, Vanderbilt lost, LSU lost, Florida, East you know, Florida, Carolina, North Car- East Carolina lost. Like, yeah. but East Carolina lost. To, Wake Forest, I'm, the number Wake one team Forest. in the country, lost. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go on a limb, and it's not a huge heavy limb because they were a super regional team last year. But that Campbell Campbell's team that beat yeah. East Carolina is going to be a super they're regional. Good. They're a dark horse to go to Omaha because they are another yeah. team. I was looking at them today. They return of their nine starters. They returned eight in the field. They returned their top three arms uh, of starters and then their top closer from last year. That's a ton of experience from a team that was a runaway from a super regional. Uh, they, they're they a dark horse, a dark horse for Omaha, for Omaha, and they beat a very good East Carolina team with a feel-good story of the one-legged man who got his first college plate appearance to be a walk, which is – there's a joke in there somewhere. Um, yeah, and Tuesday night was just a – yeah. <laughs> So like fitting six hours that a guy later. with one leg walked. On his, <laughs> like six hours after I stated the tweet, he's like, sorry, this is past your bedtime, but I just came up with the perfect comeback. <laughs> Dude, I don't think I could tweet this, but it's fitting that the guy with one le- that lost a leg in a horrific right. accident and we can, walked. In and we can say at the hour 12 minute mark here, but Tuesday night was just a tough night to be a premier college baseball program. It's early in the season. Do not write off your yeah. favorite team because there's so much but, baseball left. It's not even warm outside yet. There are still people in hoodies. Like It's not even warm yet. Yeah. So we Baseball, baseball is left. baseball, though. I mean, it is by its nature going to – nobody goes undefeated. Like, even against – the Detroit Tigers will win yeah. 40 to – you know, 40 games. Right. 60 games. The worst Major League Baseball team ever will win 60 games. That's it, you know? man. And you're going to have premier teams. LSU lost midweek games last year. You yeah. know, it's not like this is not going to happen. You're going to lose to – Austin P. You're going to drop a game to, you know, Georgia State. You're going to drop a game to Arkansas State here and there. It happens. It's just the it's whole baseball. product. It's baseball. It's the product as a whole right now. Right. Where Ole Miss and Mississippi State have both played five games. <laughs> They're both sitting at two and three against, well, I guess State. Is that right? We're State, two and three. Uh, yeah, we're two and three. Yeah, two and three. Against teams that you should be five and zero against. I mean, hundred percent. There's no reason we shouldn't be sitting five and zero and it's averaging an un, nine and it's runs a game. Unappealing two wins. The two wins you got weren't pretty. weren't pretty. And the but, three losses you got were very ugly. Very ugly. But I saw I got for this week, man. I was going. I looked it up in the last break. I looked it up because I was. We are pushing college baseball because we love it and we are knowledgeable about it. So I wanted for all of our Memphis folks to be able to tell you, you guys that maybe you guys have got a good thing going for you, but it looks like you guys are in the same boat that we are. <laughs> Memphis is two and three with losses to Jacksonville State and somebody else that's not good. So we may all – misery loves company, so just come on on. That's it. If there's any Memphis baseball fans listening at this hour 15 mark, hit us up. We'll get you on the show. We'll talk about Memphis, Memphis baseball in this last segment. Memphis has lost – uh Two games against Jacksonville State and one game against Little Rock. So Yikes. <laughs> with a win against Central Arkansas and Jack State. Yikes. With well, the best helmet in college football, Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for being here this week. Love you guys. Thank you all for listening to the show. We would not be here without you all. Actually, we would because we're going to do the show regardless because we have fun with it. It's a great time. Um, but at the end of the day, we're always grateful for our listeners. Thank y'all for being here. We love y'all. Uncle Buck, hit, hit him with a line. We're going to take it the next yeah, week. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. And just remember, with the Two Buck Sports Show, you always get what you pay for. See you yes, on Friday. Sir. See y'all Friday. Thank you for listening to the Two Buck Sports Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of all things Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next time.